Hello, everybody. It's Crystal. I'm really excited to be here with you today and sharing some of this beautiful energy of the 1010 portal that's coming through. Um, this channel is a channel that we did on triggers, and it's very beautiful. I found a lot of uh, clarity in this channel, um, as well as Teresa, because we are learning that there's more information in these triggers for us than just healing, because it offers a whole new different perspective from a vibration that we don't normally carry ourselves in. So being able to stay open in these moments, even though it will take some practice, but being able to be open in these moments and really just exist in the space with these sensations and intensities gives us the opportunity to receive more information than we would normally. So I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I have been. I'm still integrating a lot of this information. I feel like I'm still reorganizing who I am uh, now based off of this information and how I'm going to choose my experience going forward. So it's been really cool, really interesting. I can't wait to talk more about this um, after the dust settles a little bit. So I hope you enjoy. And if you do, don't forget to give us a like or a thumbs up. Uh, hit the bell so you don't miss anything going forward. And I can't wait to see what happens next. I love you so much. Bye. So like the first thing that I have to say is that they've really been showing me since yesterday how easy it is to still receive guidance and signs when you feel that your energy is misaligned. Because what they're showing me is that this idea that we're misaligned is really our expansion and the uncomfortable feeling that comes along with the unknown. Yeah, I love that. It's um, like... It's like when you, you should sit in the fan and you feel that feeling, whatever comes up, and then allow that, very quickly you'll move into clarity. And that's where the expansion in your power comes from. Yeah, and like, so I just chose this song because it was the only, it was the closest meditation music, and it just so happens that this same song was a song I listened to over and over and over the night that I took San Pedro. Mm. What, San Pedro? It's not San Pedro, what is it? Uh, it is name. San Pedro. I'm thinking Palo Santo. No, no, no. But it is San Pedro, that cactus. Yeah. And that entire night that I had this song on, I just felt nauseous and uncomfortable. I couldn't stop thinking about my childhood. Well. And here I am, like, smack dab all of a sudden in the middle of processing pieces of my childhood today. So... Rufus is like trying to get me to calm down because he's trying to show me something that I have to like teach you right now. Okay. Um, so he's like giving me a download of energy. And it's like there's an expectation that I'm going to translate this for you okay. so that you can ground it. Um, he's saying this is like the next step to our mission. But I don't really fully understand it. There's a space between the 
human experience and the soul experience, the consciousness experience. There's a space between. And he's making me feel like this space between that we're going to talk about is what you've referenced to as like zero point. Yes. <clears throat> He's saying the reason he was talking to me earlier about triggers is because he's trying to teach me about zero point. So he's saying that by me bringing through this channel for you, you will be able to teach me what I need to know about it. Okay. Because I'm going to take this and apply it to emotional responses how to get into the zero point of an emotional trigger in reaction. Because that's going to help a lot of people heal. They're saying in this zero point space is where like all possibility resides because you have access to the resistance and the alignment. So you can gain all perspectives. But that space is uncomfortable because most people want to be in the human experience of the trigger. It makes it difficult to see the perspective of the full consciousness. You have to be okay with feeling the trigger and being okay with the trigger at the same time. Feel it. Notice it, see what it attaches itself to, what vibrations within are close to that, that are still with, within and, and able to be activated. And when those things come up, just sit with it. There's information there. You step one of the mission was to practice sitting with the downloads as they come and allowing in the totality of them. And we're kind of asking you to go into that same place with your emotions. So instead of expressing the emotion and attaching it to thought, Simply feel Sit it, in it and feel allow it. the information to come through. Just be with the sensation that you're receiving. Think of it as energetic information. You don't want to cling on to everything that's coming through. You want to see it, experience it, interpret it just like you would any other information. It will allow a level of detachment that will move you into having an experience with this, with this zero point energy. This is the step to get you to have the experience of what that energy will feel like so that you can begin to create with it. Interesting. So if you're feeling, let's say, fear, and you right step in the middle of it, simply feeling that fear... Accept it, yeah. And then we're able to... It puts you in a 
less resistant vibration so that more energy, more information can show up to you in that space. And as long as you're not resistant, you're not going to feel that energy really pushing and pulling on you. You're just going to have an experience. And the level of knowing that comes out of that is way bigger than something that would come from trying to shift that negative feeling. Trying to change it, trying to figure it out, line it up, make sense. Figure out what piece of the puzzle this is. Just being with it, like all other things, allows the totality of it. So and you line up with that information way quicker than you think. Yeah, no, there, no. there will be times that the the energy will continue to pour over, and that's just because we're more out of alignment than maybe we had thought in the beginning. But as you pull yourself back into your power, you see with more clarity than you would have if you had just... Okay, get me out of this. What do I need to do? What tool do I have? How do I fix this? I like that. So that actually moves us from just sitting in emotion to from that into clarity. And that's where our power lies. Mm. There's actually power in just, wow, interesting, in just feeling the emotion. Wow. I never saw that. It's very big. Yeah, it's huge. It's very big. You know, and then <clears throat> from this space, the human can release the idea of something needing to be attached to the emotion. And then we would quit dragging around this story that doesn't serve you, that's never served you. Wow. Like healing can be so much more than we make it out to be. We make it out to be this bad thing. And all it is is really taking your power back from the information you've been given that no longer serves you. I no longer choose this. And it's not that you're no longer choosing the circumstance or the person. It's that you're no longer choosing the experience. You end that cycle by no longer participating. And you no longer participate when you can release it. And that's a lot easier than it's made out to be. Humans like to put things in order and you have to have steps and it has to be hard. Even when we talk about being in the flow and being at ease. You still have to create this big process and wait for your result. And if it doesn't show up, you have to tweak all these things and make sure you're worthy. And this is so far from the truth. You're a creator. You can create in the light or the dark. It's your choice. It doesn't matter to us. You're a creator. You're not deprived of who you are at any point, regardless of where you're vibrating. You may not like what you create at some points, but you're always in charge of this. And to think that you're not is something we've been trying to get Crystal to understand. It's a big lesson for her. It's hard for her to wrap her mind around that. That she's worthy, even when she's off. Well, that just goes back to when, what we were just talking about earlier, of course you can get your answers when you're out of alignment, because when you're out of alignment is when the negative emotion is going on, and your power is in sitting in that. So, But you have to be able to access the zero point. You have to be able to be in between both frequencies. You have to be able to easily tap into the silver lining and the resistance that's being presented, you have to see both to have that clarity. But when you inundate yourself with the information that only supports one side, 
you don't allow yourself the totality of information that's present. And that's why we're saying when you can really pull yourself out of the emotion of something for just a moment and be the observer, you give yourself the perspective of both sides and you have a whole new world to create with. And this is why there's so much energy in the resistance. Because it is so far from what you would normally create. If you're vibrating over here in joy and now you're sitting in fear and choosing these new choices, the level of creation power that comes from this vibration will expand exponentially when you go back, Crystal, to who you normally are. It's silly to not think that we in humanness don't praise these moments that you receive massive amounts of information. All you can focus on is the intensity of frequency and you choose to call it an emotion and it fucks everything up. Emotion is an excuse for an intense vibration, some, some sort of power that you are feeling. And in order to get you to be fearful of it, it's a negative emotion. It is a sensation. Redefine it. Well, intense frequency, I like that. That takes the charge out of it being more powerful than what we feel we can overcome. There's a lot of energy in this room to take your power back. To claim it. It's important for Crystal to stay clear so that she can pay attention and know what it means to claim her power right now. Because she does not need to push against to be powerful. She doesn't know what that looks like. She doesn't know what that means. What do you mean? How do you claim your power without asserting yourself? It's very confusing for her right now. So these practices are going to allow in the information that she needs to be able to stay in that zero point, seeing the contrast and the expansion, holding herself within her own integrity of alignment, and choosing to express from that place. It doesn't take all of this energy to clear this, move this. It's just that half the time we don't know what the next step is. What does it even mean to be this new person who doesn't tolerate lack of integrity yet doesn't step outside of integrity themselves. What does that look like? How do you lead from that place? As you're standing and standing in your knowing, that is your power. And not wavering from that knowing. They're wanting me to ask you what you've learned. Recently? I don't know. Um, what I was getting when you were talking about that is this zero point, no point, which is where true manifestation comes. It's almost like you see there's alignment over here and the intense frequency over here and in that null point you see all of the potentials and in that moment you get to line up with what you truly desire and pick one it's a power not point. just the alignment of all of it it is now choose it's a creation yeah yeah 
Yeah. That's what I saw. It's a PowerPoint. Yeah. It's like that everything. And this is why in the beginning we were really trying to express to the both of you to play a game. This is a game. Think of this as assimilation and allow it to be easy. When you stay in that detached place, when your emotional investment isn't as deep, it's so much easier to control your reality, to control what you create in front of you, to manifest so quickly. Because your passion isn't about some sort of thing that your emotions are going to ebb and flow about. Your manifestation is about who you are. And you choose that already. So you have the power. You're not waiting around for this manifestation. Even the idea of manifesting something is manifesting lack. You are the thing, and you have total control of who you are in every moment. Yeah, that's what I've been getting the last couple of days, is <clears throat> there's so much more power in playing around, pretending, imagining who you want to be in every moment, in every situation, not what you want to manifest. It's even in the imagination of, of what I want to create, a house, a car, some things, some job, some relationship, some health. That is still creating outside of you. And that's such a slower approach. Key is who do I want to who do I want to experience me being? Because you project your person. reality from the inside. Exactly. So when you fulfill the role of being, all of the things that you think come along with that beingness manifest straight in front of you. But you do truly have to kind of engross yourself in that energy. Yeah. Um, when you look at the way humans live, it really is a consumption feeling. You do have to put yourself in it so much at this point that you are completely distracted from the outside world. And so what we are looking at is the teeter-totter. How much the human is willing to invest into this daydream of creation is how much they are going to be able to keep themselves there in that experience. Emotion is a release mechanism. It's not meant to be an indicator. Wow. Interesting. So literally when we are feeling the emotion... You're automatically releasing. trying to release that vibration because it doesn't match who you are. And, so by and you've been trained to believe that it's an indicator. Wow, that's big. It's not an indicator. It's an indicator that this energy does not belong within you. So how we create, we've been taught to create by merging thought and emotion. Emotion sort of triggers the thought. So now we're being moved from that to allow the energy to serve you by expressing through you, which allows you to release 
and move yourself to a neutral point and from that space it's not neutral okay it's power information it's big I guess I really have to go experience that to know that it's it's like the coming together of everything it's not neutral Okay. It's so powerful. But we get so consumed in the negative emotion that we feel brought us there. We miss it. So when you release the judgment and be the observer, you receive a completely new download of information from your trigger. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. That's big. There's a lot of power here. Yeah. Because it's so far from who you normally are and what you normally access. So when you bring your highest self into these places of being triggered and you sit with your higher self in these places of vulnerability, the potential of creation on the other side of that is what you came here for. Wow, because, wow, you know, we've been taught that with negative emotion, you're in resistance. This wouldn't have been beneficial in the beginning because there wouldn't have been any control. Uh -huh. When you cannot control your emotion, I mean, it took you to how many years to be able to control your emotions? Three? Three years? Yeah. And in a very healthy partnership to, for you to both learn how to control your own emotion. Now imagine being given this information without that level of control. It wouldn't have worked. How does that work with positive emotion? Like let's say I'm in a blissed out, excited state. It is a level of alignment that is so pure that there's not enough resistance for contrast to even give you the sparks of ideas that you reach from places that are uncomfortable. They serve you the same. One is easy and one is packed full of information. One has been deemed uncomfortable because of its intensity and a teaching of this lack of trust within that you can't make your way through hard times in higher consciousness because even in that there's this resistance that this is bad, this is hard, this is unwanted or unwarranted. There's so much communication if you can find ease while being triggered. Well, that almost makes you want to look forward to being triggered. It's like there's this is way something, more movement. And this is something that's so confusing for Crystal right now. She feels extremely connected. She feels extremely vulnerable and sensitive. And she's being triggered. And she wants to not be mad at it because it doesn't feel good. But she doesn't know how to be in that space. So it's at this point releasing the attachment to emotion. Releasing the attachment to the drama of feeling something. Well, we tend to attach the emotion with what happened last time with what happened when I was a kid because it feels like the frequency we've experienced before. So it's easy to break that simply by this is an intense frequency that's wow. And that's it. Simple. It has nothing to do with any frequency you've ever experienced releasing, before. Yeah, releasing the drama to be creating a story so that it fits into your life right, instead of being one with it receiving the information and letting it go 
that that level of non non attachment is where the magic is. But it's not even at this point in y'all's consciousness. It's not completely accessible yet. There's still an attachment to the emotion. Yeah. What about emotions like guilt? Like, where? What is that? That's from? a huge attachment. Okay. It's a self-sabotage attachment. Yeah, and that's big. When you practice that level of cutting off your own energy so that other people can feel comfortable, it gets very disguised over years of hanging on to other people's energy. It builds up, it builds up, it builds up. So you don't realize that the core of it is the self-sabotage. It's almost a vibration of needing to prove that you're unworthy. So you hang on to it. It creates a victimhood. It's an attention-seeking behavior from childhood wounds. There's a lot of information within guilt when you can just sit with it. There's a lot of clarity in these spaces. Detaching from emotion is the name of the game right now when it comes to external influences. The emotion that we would like for you two to focus on is the emotion between this connection that's growing. What about depression? and the frequency of depression. If that is the ultimate powerlessness. Yeah. That is a space of giving your power away so much that you have this buildup of not even knowing that all you need is your power back. Because you don't realize in those habits that you've even given it away. And that comes from years of self-sabotage and carrying guilt, self-judgment. People don't even realize that all of these things, they don't come from external forces. They don't come from ex-husbands. They don't come from past relationships. They come from the way you choose to believe about yourself as you go through these things and you create belief systems based on that. Can we apply the same... I while back I got that with some, dis when you have discomfort in the body, whether it's disease, anything, if you simply place your awareness in it, you'll receive information on how to heal it. So can we apply the same with emotion as we can with the physical body? Yeah. You can just, like you tune into any energy, place your awareness on receiving information from that energy as you tune into it, and you will allow it in if you're open and willing. Not that you're in alignment with your highest, highest self, but that you're in alignment with receiving the answer. Wow. So you can, a true healer does that yes. with their with people. This is how Crystal connects into energy. She tunes into something and she expects it to communicate with her. It's almost like she commands it to communicate with her. And she didn't realize this consciously until about three months ago. She can tune into anything and command it to communicate with her. The thing that fucks her up is when she gets in her own way because she tries to get information for herself and then she allows her worries and fears to take over and tries to communicate and counteract from that space. That's not authentic energy and she knows it. She just doesn't know how to step on the other side of that yet. So simply just applying the same tools. When you get into self-judgment, self-doubt, stop, look and listen. Just feel what you're feeling. Get out of the head. Allow it to relieve. Release. Yeah. I love that. Emotion, energy in motion, it's energy literally Moving ready out to of get you. the hell out. Yeah. 
And when you cling to it, you choose to keep it again, and then you have to release it again. With consciousness, got it. Cool. So, this trip that we went to in Arkansas was a whirlwind of strange events that took us through fearful circumstances only to come back from that to just opening up to a, a connection that was so powerful to coming back into the real world as we call it to feeling like holy shit none of this is where I'm at what's going on how about clarity on that This download's really big and I'm just seeing a lot of swirling energy right now and they're making me really feel like this is about our childhood. The fear I had in Arkansas brought me back to seeing things when I was a kid and I had no support. It was that same level of fear and it ignited and I did not acknowledge it the way that I should have, and I just moved on. And so it's just kind of residual within me, and there's everything feels off because of that, because I don't match what's manifesting in my experience right now. But it's like it's like reloading itself energetically because I kind of just pushed it under the rug. And that doesn't make any sense to me because in the hotel I chose to be in a higher vibration. And they're saying I still acted in fear. So what from, I don't understand. Okay, that. from what I'm what I'm learning is we tend to move, try to move too fast from fear to alignment, and we're missing the whole point, and that's yeah. what happens. So we come back around to being right where you left off, and so it's actually helping And that's us. why all that emotion came up with your dad, because you're doing the same thing they're saying. Uh -huh. It's like the emotion is there, and we just do whatever we can to get get out of it. Yeah. Like, we just have to get out of feeling that way. Okay, so now I know... We have to stop judging ourselves in that space. Right. When, uh, well, now I know how to do that differently. So how does, you know... I don't know. I guess I'm seeing... That energy was so strong, it's created like this ripple effect. Uh -huh. So this same frequency is going to keep coming up. And that's why I'm seeing it with like Mandy and Biscuit. Like this whole boundary thing. This whole... All my dream last night, it's all tied in to Arkansas. Really? It's all tied into these childhood fears. Because I was terrified, and I would tell people what I was experiencing. I would tell my parents, and they would just make me feel like I was lying to them or that it just was not real. But that was my reality. And it made me feel crazy, even as a little girl. Well, it sets you up with the inability to trust yourself because no one's trusting you. So without, so, okay, do we just, you move through life waiting for triggers? I mean, or is there a way to move past all of this without, you know? No, they're making me really feel like we don't need the trigger. Uh -huh. You don't need the trigger. You can be in expansion all the time. But they're saying that if we're choosing the experience of the trigger, if that's just where our vibration is and it comes up and it hits us, that we can't just keep pushing it out of the way. 
we have to deal with the reason of why we're taking on the trigger and our reaction to the trigger and look at like what we're really ready to heal because there's a reason we're not taking the high road there's a reason we're not taking the high road because just like you had the opportunity to not be triggered by what your dad said, I had that opportunity too. And see, we say that, but then when you're in it, it happens exactly so fast that intense, like none other frequency. And so that. we have to look at that. We have to sit in it as the observer and let all of the information come in. Staying in the heart, letting the mind off duty, and just allowing the information of the circumstance to come in, all of it. Because what will show up, where you are, where they are, where source stands, objectively how this is serving all parties. And the more we stay in that space and try and just be and let the energy run through us instead of trying to clear ourselves out of this so quickly. It's like, oh, okay, got it. I'm over this. I got to get out of this frequency. Or run. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it certainly is going to make it easier knowing, just reminding myself, it's intense frequency. Yeah. It's okay. Don't touch it, yeah. It doesn't have to be attached to anger, sadness, frustration, abandonment, none of it. It can just be a sensation. And you can recognize that it is reminding you of something, but you can also tell yourself in those moments it's no longer your truth. There are ways to acknowledge both sides of this energy while standing very firmly in your power. And that is the experience that you're searching for. That'll be a game changer. One full of knowing and not so much fiery emotion where you feel as though you have lost your power. There will be a lot more compassion in these spaces too. Self-compassion and compassion for others. And then knowing where to place these boundaries going forward so that you continue to honor yourself. We only accept integrity. It's what you've asked for. And it's time that everybody understands that when they are around either one of you, that is what is expected of them. And if that relationship, if that connection is no longer an energetic fit, it's seen clearly from both sides that it's just best to part ways. It's an energetic match. It's an energetic game. It's not about hurting anybody's feelings. And it's not about hurting anybody's ego. It's just about matching energy. This is how I choose to live my life. That really allows everybody off the hook. Yeah. Yeah. That's the ultimate integrity.
Crystal feels very vulnerable and insecure. And she's running from it. What's it coming from? What? What is it? What is that coming from? Just an old frequency. So applied to that. You just feel the vulnerability. She is. Isn't that vulnerability is a funny thing? It's an rawness and openness. Fear. It's, it's, it's fear. A, there's a belief that that's a bad thing. That somebody else has the opportunity to see you and judge you for it. That if somebody else were to tell you that you're not worthy, you would own that, and that's not true. You wouldn't. She had a vibration she used to carry around in high school. Everybody expected her to be happy all the time, so she would always put on a happy face, even on the hardest days. And she does that now. That is a hard expectation to live up to. That would create a feeling of not ever measuring up, or not being enough. There's a lot of judgment that happens when she's off because of that. And that's what sitting in this space of vulnerability right now is allowing her to see really clearly. And that's how you can move through these vibrations that no longer serve you and really clear them out for good. Just sit with it and let it show itself to you. Create a safe space where you feel okay being vulnerable in the way that you feel so that you can look at it objectively. Because when you can't even be okay with the way that you feel, you distract yourself from it. And then it'll keep coming up. Well, we have the tools now to do that differently. It's going to be a game changer from here on out. Yeah, she wants her power very badly. Yeah. Her stability. You have to think about what's important for you to say to your father. Okay. And you'll find the most perfect thing to say to him when you really sit with how that made you feel and collect all information. Okay. This will also be when you can really release that vibration. Okay. That will be empowering. Yeah. Big time. I get it. That's how you take your power back. then we imply the boundaries so that we never have to give our power away again. And there's an understanding growing within Crystal that she needs to continue to explore, which is that boundaries don't always come with aggression. Because in her life, boundaries had to come with aggression.
that's not her experience anymore. So she can let go of the fear of putting down boundaries. Boundaries can be done with peace and respect. Do you have any other questions? No, this has all been just absolutely perfect. Unless you want to head into a new direction. They're just showing me like a ship sending energy to you. They're saying like, before you fall asleep at night, visualize yourself like going through a portal or going into a ship. Okay. It'll trigger your memory for you to remember where you're going at night. Okay. They're saying like a lot of your dream interpretation is just your mind trying to put together these other realms that you're going to. But it's almost like the way that they're going to start showing me the ships, they're going to start showing you where you go in your dream state. Almost like a lucid dream, they're saying. Yeah. So I'm having, I'm having crazy dreams about things coming after us? Yeah. What is that? There are energies that are trying to permeate our fields. They are not winning. They are not. But it is, it is happening. And you're able to be more aware of it when you're in the fourth dimension. There's a lot of pr protection around you both, but there is a lot of energetic lashing out that is being targeted in your direction on purpose. But it's nothing that you can't withstand. And it won't be much longer. Yeah. I started to recognize that when I, if I go down some crazy spiral that that's not me. Yeah. Well, and just like that energy influences you, it also influences people around you to be triggered to have conversation with you that's uncomfortable or to bring up things that just are uncomfortable. Your circles, your clients, they're all triggered to say things to trigger you a lot. A lot more than you notice. Mm. But because you keep yourself in a high vibration, you kind of just float right over a lot of that. That's true. Which means that those vibrations are no longer active within you, so you don't need that trigger to get free from that vibration. But when it triggers you, that means it's there. And then we sit in it, and we take in all the information so that we can make our decisions and really let go of that frequency. And then it no longer triggers you, which is the proof that you've really let it go. Mm -hmm. 